now let's dig into product marketing's role um, when it comes to, or rather let me put it this way, let's come to product marketing with respect to its relation to the other teams that it closely collaborates with. Mm -hmm. So one thing that I've noticed is that uh, this is a topic that's not really touched upon much, which mm -hmm. is product marketing's evolving role in customer success specifically. So with a growing focus on product-led growth, or PLG as we call it, mm -hmm. uh, we'd like to understand how have you seen product marketing's role evolve in terms of supporting customer success specifically? And if you can tell us a little bit about the areas where product marketers can make a direct impact on post-sales success. Awesome. And to talk about that, I'm going to start from the basics, right? Um, I'm a big believer of simplicity. So if you have heard the words awareness, consideration, decision, I call them fancy words. So this is my simplified version that I came across in 2016 and I've held on to it. Everybody, our customers go through this buyer journey. Mm -hmm. They have a discovery phase where they realize there's a challenge, a problem, something that they need to change or maybe fix. And they are then learning, right? They are maybe probably stumbling upon your website, some videos, maybe some intro webinars about the problem at hand, the, the use case itself. And then they decide, okay, I want to try this product. Can this product do what it says it can do? Can the solution serve my needs? So they're looking at demos. They're probably looking at product webinars. And then they decide, okay, I see some value here. I think this can solve my problem. I have the budget for it. I'm going to buy this product. But before I do, I will also look at references, right? Today, nobody goes in and buys products without checking. Is the product what it says it can do? Are there other people that will vouch for it? And so the customer reviews community became part of that. And this is where that customer success part comes in. After the buy phase and most of product marketing in our career, we spend a lot of our time in that discover, learn, and try phase. We are helping in that awareness. We are helping with all of the top of funnel, mid funnel, bottom of funnel. You hear all the tofu, mofu <laughs> variations of A lot it. of jargons. But yeah. yeah, a lot of jargons. But at the end of the day, where we should spend our time is in that customer success, that advocate phase. And this is why I am really thrilled about today's conversation because we don't really get enough time and resources to spend time there. And especially because a lot of the work that I do is in B2B SaaS, this is where we should spend our time. Our retention, making sure we are reducing churn is a big part of that equation. So if we can create those advocates, right? I've had the experience to create those advocates myself. We have created customer advisory boards to bring these advocates together, go into user conferences and have these customers be our heroes of the story it changes the conversation night and day. And that's the beauty of it because at the end of the day, what we do as product marketing is telling stories, right? We're creating these narratives. You have done some really good stuff of positioning, messaging, understanding your buyer persona. How do you create these stories? It's that start, middle, and end. And you want to tie the discover and learn to that start, right? Make it worth their time to care. Your middle is gaining that trust and credibility. You're not just saying you can do it, you're showing them. And then your end is finding these true storytellers. So that's where the customer success part comes in. And I encourage all product marketers, whether you have the opportunity to do this today or not, find ways to interact with your customer success teams. And there are upsell, cross-sell programs that you could tap into. And sometimes you might even create product marketing functions to help you with that. So Look at where the company's priorities are. If they are focused on customer lifetime value, and we'll talk a little bit about priorities shortly, this is all helping shape some of those conversations. So customer success, whether you are part of the conversation or not, product marketing should be um, having those discussions for sure. So that's quite interesting. So if you could just look back on your journey so far mm -hmm. and at all the positions and organizations that you've worked at, from there, can you share an example where product marketing actually helped influence customer retention or mm -hmm. played a key role in driving customer expansion efforts or mm -hmm. to that effect? Absolutely. Yeah. So I'll, I'll go back to one of the other tenants of our basics, right, which is your product launch. You're hired as a PMM. You're coming in to solve that product launch question. How do we launch a product? What are the things we need to get the launch done? So let's start with our OKRs, right? We, as product marketing, are big believers in OKRs. We know that 
all of the work we do, it's not just one team, right? You're working with product, you're working with sales, marketing, customer success, all of these teams together. They need to know this new product is coming to the market before it goes and touches the market. So planning and having those OKRs are key. You can do our own work, right? Messaging, web page, video spotlights, all of those good stuff. But that early adopter program, that number five, is where your customer success becomes a key part of that equation because now you're working with your power users. You're working with your customer success teams to say, hey, who, like, I was working on a data warehouse launch, right? So we have this new um, data ingestion product that we were working on. And this product advisory council came into existence because we were bringing part partners and customers into the conversation. And we were prepping them to walk them through and not just say, hey, you said you need this product, we build the product. We are carrying them through that process. So uh, one of the things we talk about in the communication module is bring people into the process. This is basically that, right? So your advocates, your customers, your power users, maybe the new personas that you want to go after, you're walking them through, what are we going to launch? Uh, what does the product look like? What are some capabilities that the product has? And then getting feedback and iterating so that when we launch the product, it is something that the customers want. That's number one. So I've worked very closely with the customer success team to identify some of these folks. I've looked at data, right? Everything we do needs to be backed up by data. I've looked at data to say, I see these customers are having these specific data warehouses. They would be great use cases for us to even pilot and see if they would be interested. And we've gotten good feedback, right? As we're thinking of pricing and packaging, I'm walking them through and saying, hey, we're thinking about these tiers. Does this make sense? Um, what data warehouses should we inter integrate with, right? These are all questions that became part of that. And that wouldn't have happened if I didn't have the support with that customer success team. At the same time, number six, your 30, 90, 180 day metrics. Who is doing the follow through? As product marketing, we are great at running with the project getting it done and then ready to jump into the next initiative because that's the nature of the beast, right? Uh, we're always putting down fires, but somebody needs to be accountable for that 30, 90, 180 day. How many certifications do we need? Um, so the training team is involved in it. Uh, what does implementation look like? Are we bringing professional services into the conversation? Um, how are we going to make sure if we need partners that the partners are enabled, right? All of this becomes part of that 30, 60, 90, 180 day metrics. And it is making sure you have that follow through. So it's not like, oh, six months have gone by and nothing has happened about the product. And everyone's like, where is your go-to-market success? What does it look like? Yeah. They're not questioning you. We know where we are step-by-step step along the journey. And so number seven, training your sales. Um, sorry, number seven is training your services, support, and customer success team. I have launched a product in the past where on launch day, I'm super excited. The press release has gone out. And I have my support team leader reach out to me and be like, Div, I just saw that we just launched a new product. When were you going to tell us? And I was like, I'm so sorry. That was not my intention. But I just got carried away in the, the hype of the uh, go-to-market process, right? So that's why this 10-step product launch process exists for me so that I don't forget the people that need to be part of the process. And making sure that when we launch, that everybody is enabled, right? Number Nine is your sales enablement. Globally, everybody needs to be enabled. Analysts need to know that this is coming. Don't just launch it and expect analysts to know. Bring them along through the process. So we have done analyst uh, conversations just to keep them up to date and also get feedback from them. What are we seeing in the market? Right? This becomes a holistic effort. It's not just get the product out there and then hope and pray that everybody will want to buy the product. We need to do that uh, education up front. So this, I hope, Naren, cover some of the questions you had and how do we bring the whole process together? Absolutely. I think uh, this is touched and we've dived deeply into the role of customer success in the entire process. And if you could just take us uh, through a little bit of, um, you know, not all of this goes all smoothly. That I'm sure there are challenges that you face, right? So what are some of the common challenges in aligning product marketing and customer success? And more specifically, how can product marketers bridge those gaps and drive better collaboration between these teams? Communication, communication, communication. Number one, right? Um, oftentimes we can do all the things we want. Uh, we can run with the program. We can create all the content, all the assets, the presentations. But if the 
team doesn't have an option to provide input, right? Um, sometimes go to market looks like, oh, just asking me for all of these things to do. Does she even know all my, all my priorities and does she even understand the things that I'm focused on? So making sure we have shared OKRs have been key. And this is across product sales, marketing and customer success, right? All four of us um, should be in tandem with the work that we're doing. And if we feel like we're going in 10 different directions, success is going to be very questionable and very difficult. One of the key things that we struggle with product launches is timing, right? We right. may say, and, and one of the things that I just experienced, right? I was brought in um, a year ago to a role where I was brought in to help with a product launch. It was a new product, new team that was being built. Come one year after the product is not ready to be launched. We need another good six to nine months probably to get the product to where it needs to be to launch. That is where product marketing misses the opportunity. And there are lots of things we can do in the meanwhile, but if you've been brought in to do that and that doesn't happen, then your role uh, has- That could backfire? So, yeah, that backfires bad time. And I, I mm -hmm. became a part of that backfiring, right? I got impacted as part of that. Um, right. Not saying that is the reason, but that could be one of the reasons, right? So making sure we are setting the right expectations and bringing people into the process as and when needed um, is uh, is a gamble. You don't know until you don't know, right? Um, when you've never built a product at that capacity and scale where you're creating a whole engineering team to run it, um, creating the product to do what it needs to do, these are all the bets that you're risking and then it will have its own implications from it. Absolutely. Yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't agree more. 